Hello, this is Chef Scott, and I'm coming to you from Chefsville, and I have an incredible dish for you, mashed potatoes. There's so many ways of doing them. I want to show you the simplest and basic way you can get fancy from there. There's all kinds of equipment you can use. I'm going to use my cutting board, my knife, and a pot. That's it. Sometimes people use sieves or they have potato ricers, and those are incredible for making really gourmet, fancy mwah, food. I love that. Mashed potatoes can be brought up incredibly high on the food acceptance scale. How many of you like mashed potatoes? Let's go wash our hands. To wash potatoes, you have a choice. You can use your hands or you can use a scrub brush like this. I use cold water and I do not turn it all the way up. I turn it about a quarter way and I rub it. This, my friends, is not washing a potato. See what I'm doing? That's what most kids do. Parents, teach your kids to get in there and scrubby, rubby, 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 get all that grime and dirt off. If you don't, your food will be blah. Nobody wants blah. The other thing you can do is take a clean brush and just scrub it away. Scrub all that dirt away. And what I'm doing is I'm practicing hand-eye coordination because I'm actually turning, 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 and done. That is how you wash potatoes. Now, I do want to show you that I have a chef's knife here, and you're going to laugh. You're probably looking at it wondering, wow, he's putting that on the camera? Yes, I am, because these aren't formal productions. These are just me working with you in the kitchen with my cameras, and I love this. So let's get real. Not all my utensils are perfect out of the box, nor do they stay that way. They get used, they get ground, they get dropped. And in this case, this is what happens when you have a daughter or a son that constantly puts it in the dishwasher. The abrasiveness of the dish soap and the agitation of the water and the heat and the cold will actually rip off some of your, um, I guess this is a covering. So once it's gone, it's gone, that's fine. But this will look weird but this is what we're gonna use for this dish. I hold my knife by taking my thumb and forefinger and press against the blade, and then let my rest of my hand, let my palm just rest on the handle. Then I've got my cutting board here. I've got a potato. What I do is I hold my food, and then I keep my point down so there's no chance I'm gonna cut me. Push down and just slide it through. That'll give me a good flat edge to work off of so that my food can be cut further down. Now for making mashed potatoes, as you can see, I've got myself a whole group of potatoes here. And the next step is I'm just gonna help the process along. I'm gonna cut these in half. Okay, turn them. Then I'm gonna cut my next big potato. Boy, it's always fun to watch those cooking shows, isn't it? And you see how fast people can prep their food and get it ready to cook. I gotta admit, they do it safely and they've been practicing for months and years. The same thing over and over and over. Thousands of times, you're gonna get good. I don't know about you, but have you heard of the old adage? The old saying, practice makes perfect. And it does when it comes to the kitchen. So we have two of our biggest potatoes. We have a bowl to put them in. And we've already cut this one in half. I'm going to cut this in half. And lastly, this one in half. Then I can just chop. Now when I chop, I'm gonna put my fingers under. I'm going to make like a spider here with my thumb in the back. If I leave my fingers like that, that says, cut me, cut me, cut me. 
But when you go like this, and you put your blade all the way up against your fingers, they're a guide to protect your thumb and to protect your hand. And you can hold the food with your pinky and with your thumb and with your three fingers. Can you imagine how long it would take to cook a potato like this? Let's just go ahead and drop this in the water. This thing will take about 30, 40 minutes for the heat to penetrate all the way through. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the potatoes into, oh, about one inch pieces. That means it takes about eight to 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and take these I'm gonna cut them up and I'm gonna work pretty quickly because have you ever seen potatoes? They get rusty or they oxidize when the air touches it for too long. So I'm gonna to wanna to find a way to move very quickly. Not fast, it's not a race. Well, it is a race against mother nature a little bit, but here I've got Plenty of potatoes for a family of two or three, but let's just keep going because my family loves their potatoes. So I've got two more done here. I'm gonna cut in half, cut in half, and then cut down. Those are all ready to go in. Now, when you see me lift food with my knife, I'm using my knife as a spatula. But nothing, 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 nothing goes in front of this cutting edge, except for the food you're gonna cut. My fingers do not wrap around it, and I do not pull it out. No, I only hold the food, okay? So we got this one cut. We're gonna cut this one. Slice, chop, slice, chop and transfer. Okay, now that looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna do one more because we are gonna be celebrating a dish today. I'm actually making a Spanish dish out of these, but I do need these to be mashed potatoes first. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually making croquettes, croquettes. And I'm gonna fry them and I'm gonna make an incredible basil aioli, which is a basil garlic mayonnaise. It's so delicious. Well, I got one more to do. Well, practice makes perfect. Cut it lengthwise. Done. Cut it lengthwise. Move these out. Done, done, done. And knife goes down so everybody's safe. Let's move over and cook. Okay, now I have a pot of water here. I have the pot about halfway to three quarters way up, and I am just going to get a tablespoon of salt. And I'm just gonna dissolve it in there. And this is the one chance I have to season our potatoes. We only get one shot at this. Now bring this to a boil and we'll put in our potatoes. Okay, now we have boiling water here and I've got some potatoes. One of the things I see young kids do, and it scares the heck out of me, is they go like this. You can hear that water's getting everywhere and the potential for kitchen safety violations is huge. What we wanna do is just put it in very slowly. We don't wanna drop it, we just wanna kind of put it in, but we don't want to go plop, plop. That's scary. In fact, what I do is I hold the bowl away from me and in five, four, three, two, one, get enough potatoes in here so that water will cover them. Ooh, I got room for a few more. Get all these spuds in. I do this away from me, okay? I use the bowl. I hold the bowl almost all the way over like this. And then I hold the top and then I push it in very gently. 
just like you saw. Now there is some spattering, that's okay. I'm a chef and I do handle a little heat. And this is what I wanna do. We have salted water, we're gonna bring this back up to a boil and then we're gonna lower the temperature a little bit. And in 10, 12 minutes, I'm gonna have beautiful potatoes ready to mash. What we're after when we're boiling potatoes to make mashed potatoes, we're after a nice boil. Now this is lightly boiling, we call that a simmer. And in about 10 seconds, you'll get the proper boil. See how their bubbles starting to form elsewhere and it's coming up to temperature. This is what we're after. Now to be safe, make sure your handles are put in and not hanging over the edge. When they're over the edge, that can be where accidents happen. Don't leave them like that. Kind of tuck them in a little bit like that so that nobody's gonna come and, uh, and uh, bang into it and drop this on them on the floor or anything. Woo, that's hot. Now this is a nice rolling boil. That's what we want. That will cook our potato. Hi, this is Chef Scott and we're back. Wasn't that a great commercial? I was busy in front of the camera, so I might have missed it. It happens. Anyway, we are mashing potatoes. So now what we've got, come on down here. I've got cream. I've got salt. Oops, killing everything. I got salt. I got white pepper because nobody wants to see little black specks. If you are into flavorings, I have here a basil that is in a tube. That was all we could find. With everybody hoarding everything and going crazy, they, my wife, decided to get this. It was all they had at the store. And of course, butter. If you want to flavor it, you could even do horseradish. This is a horseradish cream, which is, adds a lovely flavor you want garlic, you can put in garlic or garlic powder. Hardware, I'm really not gonna use this other than to keep things from burning, my cutting board. But we have a colander, we have something to hold hot liquids, and then here I have three different mashers. Come take a look. I got a plastic one that's kind of got that much, and then I've got uh, a metal one that has that much surface area, and then I have a wire to be honest with you, for mashing potatoes, this one thrills me. This is my go-to, okay? I don't want a lot of surface area. I wanna be able to mash. Sometimes if the potatoes aren't cooked all the way, this gets a little harder to use. And a plastic one, even though it's nice, I mean, look at that. This is beautiful for beans and other things to puree. puree. But I think my favorite for the day is gonna be this one. This is the one I wanna use. That's my go-to. Okay, come on over here. We're gonna go ahead and get ready. And we are going to empty. Empty this. Come on over here and I've got a nice hot pan that is very hot. I'm not gonna use that anymore. Then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna let it drain. Now, if you're wondering, eh, this is dirty. Not really, you know what? That's the starch from me. Uh, I cut these and put them in. And sometimes I'm gonna want a little bit of that starch water. That's like an Italian mother's secret. Now let's come over here. And the only other thing I've got to do Season this right away. We want a nice pinch of salt, maybe two. Potatoes do take a lot of salt. That's a half a teaspoon. And then a couple shakes of black pepper, a quarter teaspoon. Generally, when I cook, I use twice as much salt than I do pepper. Noisy, isn't it? And then just to give it a little bit of color and a little bit of fun, uh-oh, they got a safety steel on this. Oh no! Well, I gotta rip it off gently and open it up. There we go. Then I have this green ooze butter. What we wanna do is very carefully get that paper off. 
Nothing's worse than paper in our food. That's disgusting. At least to me it is. So what I do is I take the time to understand the folds of paper in the butter so that I can open it up. And you see how I'm opening it up and I'm not ripping it? I know that this is good. And we're gonna put in one, two, three. We're gonna put in about a half a stick. We're gonna put in four tablespoons. And if you wonder how did I know that, on the side here are measurements. And so I cut four out of that. And we're gonna put them in. We're gonna put them in. Wrap this butter up. You know, butter picks up every flavor that you have in your refrigerator. So if your refrigerator is bleh, butter's gonna go eh, and die too. Then we're gonna come over here and start mashing. You can use milk if you want. You can use half and half. Ooh, these nice hot potatoes are gonna melt that butter and you're gonna taste it. You're gonna taste the salt and pepper. And if your question is now, well, how come you have um, the skins left on? Well, all the nutrition's in the skins. You should have seen the look on the army general. Come up here, come up here. You should have seen the look on the general's faces when they learned that the skin had all the good vitamins and minerals. Because for a century, our army, navy, air force, marines, and coast guard, color guard, everybody who's guarding, they used to peel all that stuff off and throw it away. Now, we know better. And who says knowledge is not power? All right, so I'm getting in here and I'm gonna go ahead and, ooh, look at that. It's not smooth, it's chunky. And the more I work it, the smoother it's gonna get. Look at that. I can wiggle, 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 wiggle. I can go crazy on this. This is how we used to do it by hand, and it's still a great way to do it. Sometimes I'll go like this, make circles, and twist, and twist, turn the ball, turn the ball, turn the ball, until I have as smooth of a mixture as possible. And then I don't know about you, but there's one thing left. I gotta taste it. A chef's gotta taste everything. The chef has to taste everything to know if it's seasoned right. So, number one, look at that. It holds, that's good. Number two, taste. I'm gonna taste for flavoring. I'm gonna taste to make sure that I can taste the potato, the butter, the cream, the salt, pepper. And in this case, basil. Ooh, that's sweet. Here, you wanna taste? Open up. What do you think? It's really, really good. Good. Well, now I'm amazed that on some websites that have pictures, they don't have a good picture of a mashed potato. What I'd like you to do, club members, is go home. If you aren't already home, odds are at the time of this filming, you are at home because it's COVID-19, stay at home. Anyway, I want you to make these. I want you to put it in a pretty plate. I want you to take pictures of it, okay? And send it to me. And please mention with the at sign Chefsville or hashtag Chefsville. That would be fantastic. That way when people go to look it up, they'll find your beautiful picture. And you can also email it to me. They can email it to me at hello at chefsville.org.